Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Edible and Essential Oils. This lecture and coming couple of lectures will be discussing about the production of oils, especially vegetable oils and then essential oils in chemical industries. Right? So, the production includes uh, extraction of crude oil, let us say if you are uh, getting or if you are producing vegetable oils, what you do? You try to do the extraction of crude oil from oil seeds. So, this extraction is in general two types, you know extraction by mechanical methods and by using solvent extraction process, right. So, by following either of these approach or by combination of these two approaches, you will get crude oil which is obviously not the final refined one. So, then this crude oil would be processed or purified where hydrogenation, catalytic hydrogenation is one of the important process. However, in addition to this one purification processes also include bleaching, filtration, then uh, alkali treatment, etcetera, right. So, this particular week, uh, this lecture and then coming couple of uh, lectures primarily targeted on these particular things, right. So, but what we do, the approach would be first, you know, generalized uh, approach to obtain crude oil followed by processing something like hydrogenation. So, both extraction as well as the hydrogenation, a generalized approach we see irrespective of the type of oil that we are producing. Then after that uh, generalized approach, we will be discussing specific to uh, given type of oils also we are going to discuss. Okay? We are going to discuss about the kinetics, thermodynamic feasibility, etc. of the process as well. Okay? And then uh, finally, we conclude with the uh, major engineering problems of the processes associated with the production of uh, edible and essential oils we are going to discuss. However, before going into the details of all such things, it is essential to understand what are these essential oils or edible oils, etc. What is the difference these things we need to understand? So, we need to go through a few basic introductory uh, concepts about these oils, their chemical composition, properties, etc. Those things are very essential from uh, learning point of view. So, we start with the uh, introduction of uh, these uh, edible and essential oils followed by their properties. So, let us start with introduction. Edible oils are naturally occurring compounds and their derivatives naturally occurring. Most of the edible oils, you know, edible oils actually, you know, it is used as a kind of synonym uh, to the uh, vegetables as well, though not all edible oils are vegetable oils, the, those things we are going to see anyway. These are naturally occurring compounds actually. What does mean by naturally? Let us say uh, we are getting vegetable oils, we are getting from the naturally available oil seeds, etc. by doing some mechanical extraction or solvent extraction process and then purification kind of thing. Even if it is like you know fish oil something like that, those things are also available naturally. So, that is the reason uh, this oils and fats industry is coming under the natural product industry of uh, organic chemical technology as we have already discussed in the previous week. Right? So, these uh, oils, edible oils essentially they are naturally occurring compounds and their derivatives. Compounds such as long chain fatty acids and esters, esters are something like uh, uh, glycerides, whereas their derivatives are nothing but long chain fatty alcohols, something like glycerin or glycerol and then uh, sulfates and sulfonates, etc. Okay. So, basically the uh, chemical composition if you see from this definition, edible oils consisting of 
long chain fatty acids, alcohols and then glycerates etc. or their esters etc. Okay? Most of them are glycerate type esters. Products of these compounds are used food purpose as uh, cooking oil or also for the salad dressing etc. also uh, some of these vegetables or edible oils are used. Not only for the cooking purpose or food purpose, but also they are used for other purpose like sanitation, polymers, paint industry like that. Individual oil and then in the, what is the corresponding individual uh, industrial application those things are also we are going to see in general anyway in coming slides. But in general these edible oils they are primarily used for the food purpose. However, they are also used in industries like you know polymers and paint industries etc. Something like you know making for soaps purpose also uh, some of the oils vegetable oils are used. Okay? Whereas the essential oils are group of organic compounds which are pleasantly odoriferous and used in cosmetics, perfumes, soaps, paints, varnishes, medicines, etc. These are not uh, edible oils, we do not use for the uh, food purpose or you know, salad dressing purpose, etc. But they have uh, so many other applications, applications in the cosmetic industries, perfume industries, soaps. Nowadays you see so many types of uh, soaps are coming which are uh, rich in coconut oil or maybe rich in almonds, oil etc. These kind of you know so many types of uh, different types of soaps available in the market which are rich in different types of uh, oils as well. Okay? Not only essential oils, some of the edible oils also being increasingly used in the industries nowadays. Those things are also we are going to discuss anyway. Okay? These are mostly manufactured by extraction of oils from seeds if they are vegetable oils followed by hydrogenation of oils. Right? Because these uh, oils whatever you get crude oil they are nothing but long chain fatty acids, esters etc. and most of them are unsaturated. Unsaturated, if they are unsaturated uh, what happens? Their uh, melting point is low. Okay? So, in order to have the uh, increased uh, melting point and then in order to make them saturated you need to do hydrogenation. What if, if you do not uh, do this uh, hydrogenation? then the oil quality would be very poor, that would be having a color, a dark brown color kind of color and then that would also be smelling. All these things happen because if the oils are unsaturated, then if they are exposed to the air or oxygen, they will undergo some kind of oxidation. When they undergo oxidation, then rancidity will take place and then rancidity of oil is not good. Once the rancidity of oil has been taken place, you cannot use for the cooking oil. Right? So, though it is a disadvantage from the cooking oil point of view, but however, from the industrial application point of view, some of the industrial applications like you know paints and varnishes industries there you know paints are having the uh, vehicles plus pigments right pigments they bring the color and then uh, translucence etc those kind of things um, would be brought into the paint by the pigments whereas the vehicles are nothing but the oils or uh, some kind of solvents or liquids most of them are oils so if these oils are unsaturated they would be good for the paints industries so, the same thing if you wanted to use the uh, crude oil for the cooking purpose it is not good, so you have to do the hydrogenation. But if you wanted to use it for the industrial purpose it depends on industry to industry. For example, paints industry if you take you do not need to do hydrogenation of oil, crude oil itself you can use uh, as vehicles in the paint industries. Vehicles are nothing but the solvents or uh, liquids which are nothing but the oils in which the pigments are uh, you know uh, dispersed, dispersed homogeneously so that you have a paint. Okay? So, those vehicles are nothing but some of some kind of oils. Fine? 
Now coming to the statistics ranks etc. Among the oil seeds producing countries in the world, India ranks very high. India also ranks high in cultivating the largest number of commercial varieties of oil seeds. Large number of commercial varieties of oil seeds are being produced in India. Okay? So, that way also India's rank is quite high uh, globally. Some of the commercial varieties of oil seeds include coconuts, rape and mustard seeds, sesame, curdy seed, niger seed, soya bean, sunflower, linseed, coster seed, etc copra, cotton seed and variety of number of minor seeds of tree origin. So, these many number of different types of uh, you know oil seeds are being produced for the commercial purpose in India. Oil seeds are second largest agricultural crop next to the food grains in India. Okay? That large amount not only the numbers wise but also quantity wise also. A uh, huge quantity of such kind of uh, uh, varieties of oil seeds are being produced in India. They are so much huge that they are next to the food grains. Now, we see edible versus vegetable oils. Actually, uh, commonly people use vegetable oils as synonym to the uh, edible oils, but it is not true because uh, some of the oils like you know fish oil and lard etc they are also used for the cooking, but they are not vegetable oils. Okay? So, likewise uh, you know not all vegetable oils used for cooking or uh, you know food purpose, something like you know castor oil etc. they are not used for the cooking purpose. Okay? So, these differences are essential to be understood. Okay? Although fish oil and lard are seldom used as cooking oil, the term vegetable oils is used as a synonym for edible oils. However, vegetable oils such as castor oil and linseed oil are non-edible though they are produced from vegetable oil seeds. Further, edible oils such as groundnut and coconut oil are being increasingly used in industries producing cosmetics, soaps, etc. So, this uh, groundnut, coconut oil are in general used as a edible oils mostly in fact, but however these are also used you know for making some of the cosmetic soaps etc. in industries. Okay? So, there are many other such kind of uh, examples are existing in fact. So, edible oils are major source of nutrition for people at the countryside in general. So, whatever the nutritional requirement of body is there, so most of them are being fulfilled by edible oils. Nowadays you can see most of the cooking oils etc. you may see on their packets you know they may be enriched with uh, A vitamin, E vitamin etc., D vitamin etc. those kind of advertisements are also being there. So, so this, this way most of the you know nutritional requirements are uh, fulfilled by the edible oils. Right? In the oils industry when we do the extraction of oil from the oil seeds what you get? You get a de-oiled cake or solid wastage whatever is there that we call de-oiled cake. After extracting all the oil content whatever the solid waste remaining is there that is known as the de-oiled cake and then that de-oiled cake is also very rich in nutritional contents right? and those things are used as animal food. So, entire oil seed if you take oil is providing nutritional requirement for the human being, whereas the de-oiled cake solid residue is there that is uh, you know supplying uh, nutrition to the animals or it is being used as an animal feed. So, the entire oil seed quantity whatever is there it is being utilized one way or other way. Sometimes the cake whatever is there that is usually dried and then made into the flour and then it is added along with the you know uh, protein rich edible flours as well. Okay? Now, we see industrial uses of oils and fats, specifically we take a particular type of uh, oil and then what is the corresponding industrial application in a tabular form we are going to see. Let us say animal fats, they are in general used for soaps, greases, paints, varnishes, syndates, fatty acids, plasticizers, manufacturing purpose. 
Remember these are only industrial applications of different types of oils and fats. We are talking about industrial applications. Coconut oil used in fatty alcohols, soaps and detergents manufacturing. Linseed and soya bean oil in general used for the paints, varnishes, floor coverings, lubricants and greases manufacturing. Castor oil is used for protective coatings, plastics, plasticizers, lubricants, hydraulic fluids, etc. For those purposes it is used. Tongue oil is used for uh, paints and varnishes industries. Tall oil is in general used for the soaps, leather, paint, emulsifiers, adhesives, ink industries, etc. Now you can see mostly either for the lubricants, greases or soaps, paints, these purposes, these in uh, these things are primarily used. Or, or from the quantitative point of view, you see soaps and detergents, lubricants, greases, and then paints, etc. You know these industries are increasingly using different types of oils and fats. Though there are many other industries also which are using these, uh, you know, uh, different types of oils and fats. Now we talk about solvent extraction to get the crude vegetable oil, right? So, whatever the oil seeds are there, so what you do? You try to crush using the rolls, etc. to get the crude oil in general. That is how it is being done. But that may not be always, uh, you know, uh, profitable. So, for that purpose, solvent extraction has been developed. Actually, solvent extraction has developed for the soya bean oils because it has been found by using solvent extraction method one can get up to 98 percent yield of oil from the seeds. Okay? So, such kind of reasons are there. So, the solvent extraction has been developed and then uh, subsequently the solvent extraction process has also been applied to the different types of other uh, oils production and then nowadays most of the oil industries are using a combination methods as well. Okay. So, let us see about the solvent extraction. Physical crushing for oil extraction is not a feasible process for processing oil seeds, especially when you wanted to do a continuous process at uh, uh, large tonnages uh, quantities. So, continuous solvent extraction is main process for processing of oil seeds such as groundnut, soya bean and rapeseed. So, this good thing about this process is that you can do continuous solvent extraction. When you have a process continuous, so then what is the ben benefit? Your uh, capital cost would be uh, you know less. The size of the equipment etc. would be smaller and then you can uh, operate uh, you know for the you know large quantities of raw materials you can operate if it is reaction raw material or if it is processing you know large quantities of the material would can be processed in a uh, continuous uh, approach in lesser time. Okay? Main product from solvent extraction is obviously crude vegetable oil. If you wanted to use it for the cooking oil purpose, then you have to uh, do the hydrogenation of this oil. Okay? It is having other applications as well in the industrial uh, level as I have already uh, seen in the previous slide. It is primarily used in the manufacture of refined edible oils and vanaspati. Okay? This vanaspati is nothing but the hydrogenated or hardened oil whatever is there. So, that is nothing but the vanaspati. It is also used to a lesser extent in glycerol and fatty acids production for usage in soaps and other toiletries. Actually for soaps manufacturing it is better to have the glycerols. Most of the soaps are having glycerol content up to 30, 40 percent also in general, right? So, that glycerol etc. are coming from such kind of crude vegetable oils. There are a number of other value added products for varied applications as well for domestic industry and thus there is a huge market for the crude vegetable oil itself. Byproduct of this process is nothing but de-oiled cake as already mentioned which is high in protein content and used as cattle food as well. Now, we see end uses of vegetable oils only. Okay? These vegetable oils in general often used as edible oils as uh, liquid 57 percent. That means in 
uh, liquid form these edible oils are used and then that is up to 57 percent or even more also. Vanaspati which is nothing but hydrogenated oil, harder one which is 19 percent. For soaps and detergents roughly 10 percent, cosmetics 9 percent, paints and varnishes 2 percent and another miscellaneous may be 1 percent, right. Now we see chemical composition and physical properties of vegetable oils. So chemical composition is very much essential to understand so that we try to do as we have already uh, discussed fats and oils are nothing but mixtures of glycerides, of fatty acids, of this particular kind of structure. Here this R1, R2, R3 are uh, some you know organic uh, radicals, okay. So they need not to be same, right. So they are having different uh, structures, so we see some of them in the next slide anyway, right. They, these glycerides mostly unsaturated, so if they are unsaturated definitely this R1, R2, R3, etc. whatever are there, they would be having double bonds, right. If you remove those double bonds then they will become saturated and then that is possible by doing the hydrogenation. As per industrial terminology all oils are liquids and fats are solids at normal temperature. Coming to the waxes they are mixed esters of polyhydric alcohols other than the glycerin or glycerol. Glycerin is also known as the glycerol. In a common terminology and these waxes are solid at room temperatures. Now we see effect of degree of saturation as I mentioned uh, this R1, R2, R3 etc. whatever uh, are there, right. So they are nothing but the organic radical to be specific fatty acid radicals. These would be having you know double bonds, right. So depending on number of double bonds, you know the melting point and then chemical reactivity with oxygen or air, uh, you know uh, changes. So that we have to see, right. So if you see that one here, so let us say uh, steric radical if you have, its composition is C17 H35 and there are no double bonds at all. That means if there are no double bonds, its reactivity to oxygen at normal conditions is nil and thus its melting point is high, okay. So if you take other type of uh, radical olic which is nothing but two hydrogens less than the steric one that is C17H33, if two hydrogens are less that means one double bond would be there, two hydrogen atoms are less that means one hydrogen or uh, one double bond is possible because C is same because the C is same, right, all of these things, C17, 17, 17 atoms are there, right. So now you can see only by uh, bringing in one double bond, its melting point has decreased from 69 to 14 degree centigrade and then its reactivity to oxygen from nil to it has become fair, okay. If you take linoleic radical which is nothing but uh, uh, 4 hydrogen atom less than the steric that is C17H31. So if 4 hydrogen atoms are less but the uh, C number of C atoms are same then that means 2 double bonds would be existing there, right. So if the two double bonds are there, you can see the melting point is substantially decreased to minus 5 degree centigrade and then reactivity to oxygen is very rapid. Likewise linolenic if you take which is having 6 hydrogen atoms less uh, compared to the steric keeping the C same as 17, so that is C17 H29, then 6 are there, uh, 6 hydrogen atoms are less compared to this saturated one that means three hydrogen bonds or three double bonds are possible, three double bonds are possible and then you can see the melting point is further decreased to minus 11 degree centigrade and then reactivity to oxygen is extremely rapid. So this uh, 
First one is better from the cooking oil point of view. It should not be unsaturated, it should be saturated one so that the reactivity to the oxygen is uh, nil. What happens if the reactivity to the oxygen takes place? It leads to the rancidity because of that one the color of the oil would be uh, would become a brownish dark brownish kind of thing and there would there would also be some kind of smell there and then because of such kind of reasons you do not feel to use it. Not only feel but also it is not good from the health point of view. But however, uh, if you are using them for industrial applications, some of the unsaturated fatty acid alcohols, uh, glycerides, esters, etc. can also be used. Okay? So, I, under such conditions you do not need to do hydrogenation. If you have the crude oil which is you know uh, highly unsaturated like large number of uh, double bonds are there, uh, then you definitely need to do the hydro hydrogenation using catalyst and then certain temperature conditions etc. Those things we see those details anyway. So, such hydrogenation is compulsory if you are using uh, this oil for the refining refined cooking oil purpose. If you are using for the industrial applications point of view, that depends on application to application what degree of hydrogenation is required, is it required or not, you know that way one has to decide. Because of their ability to react with oxygen, the unsaturated fatty acids are used as film forming vehicles for the paints industries that is unsaturated fatty acids whatever uh, are there, you know if there are double bonds then they can be used as the vehicles in paint industry that is one example. Other industries there may be other kind of applications for same unsaturated fatty acids and then esters. The same ability to react with oxygen is also the cause of rancidity in edible fat production. So, this can be avoided by the hydrogenation and or by adding antioxidants. Okay? Hydrogenation removes the reactive double bonds by reacting with hydrogen in the, in the presence of a suitable catalyst okay? so that those double bonds would be you know get saturated and then you have the single bonds and then uh, saturated uh, fatty alcohols acids you may be having. Antioxidants are nothing but compounds which oxidize preferentially to fats without much increase in color or order. Now we talk about methods of extracting vegetable oils. Vegetable oil extraction methods if you see mechanical methods, solvent extraction method and purification processes are there. Now we see all three of them in one single. Uh, slide here it is a generalized oil extraction followed by purification or processing. Okay? All of them we see here in one, one, of one particular slide, uh, flow chart itself. Okay? First we see mechanical approach. Whatever the oil seeds are there, you do the cleaning and dehulling using some mechanical approach. Once you do the required cleaning and dehulling of the seeds, those uh, seeds you pass through rolls. When these uh, seeds pass through these uh, hard metallic rolls, what happens? They will be crushed and then flakes would form, flakes of oil seeds would form. Now, actually they, are, they would be in a distorted form. Why are we doing that one? Because these flakes would be having you know better uh, particle size and shape to undergo subsequent uh, digestion process, that is the only reason. Okay? So, after uh, passing through these rolls, whatever the flaked seeds are there, those things along with water you take in into a digester. At what ratio? If you are having 100 parts of flaked seeds, then 5 to 10 parts of water is required and to this digester you are supplying the uh, heat energy by uh, steam and then you do heating or cooking or digestion approximately 105 to 120 degrees centigrade for 15 to 20 minutes. So, here 
this, this particular section is nothing but the mechanical expelling process. In fact, this entire thing whatever from here to this section is there, this is mechanical approach. Okay. So, after this digestion section what you whatever the mixture that you have right or digested uh, system that you are having that you pass through an expeller to get the oil. This oil is nothing but the crude oil. Right. This oil you take to a alkalization section where you can add NaOH or Na2CO3 solutions at appropriate uh, uh, ratios and then stir them, mix them thoroughly. So, then what happens? This process releases free fatty acids and those free fatty acids collected as foods in a centrifugation column. In the centrifugation section, this is the centrifugation section, uh, centrifugation process here. In this centrifugation process, the free acids would be separated as food and then they are uh, not good for the uh, cooking oil purpose, so they will be taken to the soap manufacturing process. Soap manufacturing you need only fatty acids, fatty alcohols, etc., free fatty acid, free fatty alcohols. So, you can use those foods for the soap manufacturing purpose, whereas the clear oil whatever is there that you take to the uh, bleaching section. or you do the adsorption, adsorption process using activated carbon or filler aid, fuller's earth carbon etc. those kind of materials are used and then through this adsorption column when this clear oil passes through if any impurities are there they will be absorbed by this adsorption media like uh, activated carbon etc. After that the material will pass through a rotary drum filter. This is a drum which is actually rotating. Right. This drum is having uh, covered by a perforated cloth. In fact, the drum is also having some kind of perforations and then that, per, that drum circumference has been covered with the uh, filtration cloth something like that. And then this is a ball kind of section called a uh, vessel tank kind of thing in which the oil after bleaching whatever the oil is there that is taken here. Right and this drum whatever is there that is immersed into this liquid to certain level and then this drum rotating, right. While rotating from the inside of the drum you apply the vacuum so that the clear uh, liquid finished oil would be sucked by the you know vacuum applied inside this rotating drum and then collected as the finished oil. Whereas, some minor small traces of the particles etc. whatever are still remaining in the oil after bleaching, they will be uh, collected on the filter cloth. After the end of the process, you can uh, take out those one also and then use as a animal feed. Right? After this expeller section here, when you take this uh, mixture from the digester, then you do the expelling, expeller process when you do then crude oil you got and then you have done this purification step. So, the, all these steps are nothing but the purification steps, right. So, after getting the crude oil whatever the solid waste was there which is nothing but the de-oiled seeds or de-oiled cake that means cake form that solid is in the cake form and then there is no oil content in that one. That is also rich in nutritional content so that is used as animal feed. Right? This is about the mechanical approach followed by the purification steps of the vegetable oils. Okay? Now, let us say if you wanted to do the other approach that is the solvent extraction approach. So, the remaining process is the solvent extraction. In fact, this uh, solvent extraction uh, these steps are also involved. This particular thing is solvent extraction. Here the process two steps, uh, first two steps of the process are same like in mechanical process where cleaning and dehulling would be done uh, by mechanical means. Once uh, clean uh, seeds are there, then they will be passed through 
uh, rolls, cracking rolls where these seeds would be converted into the flakes forms, the flaked oil seeds whatever are there, they will be taken to extraction column. Now this extractor what it is having, it is having two rotating uh, shops like this and then they are connected with some kind of belt something like this. And to this belt actually there are buckets provided like this, these are nothing but buckets. Right? So, this material comes and then falls on these buckets like this and then its rotation is taking place in this direction. So, left one moves up and then right side this falls down like this. So, what happens? So, this material whatever the flaked oil seeds are there, they come on this bucket uh, and then the material fills it and then whatever is there so that comes here and then other side it is uh, discharged here as a wet meal. Now, to these buckets the solvent is also provided, solvent, solvent is also provided in general you know an exane kind of solvents are used. So, this solvent used to extract the oil from the flaked oil seeds in this extractor, okay? it is a continuous process. So, after this uh, process whatever the wet meal is there, so that is collected from the other side where the buckets are becoming upside down because these buckets are you know kind of fixed. Actually they can also move slightly here and there, but the they cannot flip down ups, upside down suddenly in one direction. Okay? So, this direction they are uh, upward moving collecting the material, other side they are uh, downward moving and then you know they are discharging material as wet meal. This wet meal would be taken to solvent re, uh, recovery sections, solvent removal is done by the uh, steam distillation in general or flash film evaporation or vacuum stripping column different types of things are there. You may need all three of them, three types of them more than one such kind of units you know all, or you may be requiring one or two of them only it depends on the application to the applications. So, whatever the solvent is recovered that would be recycled back to the extractor. right? From the final uh, uh, stripping column whatever is there, from there you get uh, finished solvent extracted oil. See this finished oil is the uh, final purified oil, right? whereas this oil here, this one is nothing but this is also crude oil like this. Okay? So, this finished oil, this finished solvent extracted oil whatever is there, that would be again processed through purification steps like this dotted lines. So, all these dotted lines are alternative routes. Okay? So, this is about a, a generalized approach for the oil extraction and purification by two methods, extraction by mechanical methods as well as the extraction by the solvent extraction method followed by the purification methods are same. Okay? So, this is very generalized one and more or less in all kind of uh, vegetable oils manufacturing process uh, similar approaches are there. So, specific to individual oils we are going to discuss in the next class anyway. So, but in this class we have uh, seen a very generalized approach. Whatever we discussed here, all those things are provided here again. Mechanical method that is seeds are cleaned, hulled and steam cooked at 105 to 120 degrees centigrade for 15 to 20 minutes, then presses in either a continuous screw extruder or expeller as shown or batch hydraulic press. Whereas, in the solvent extraction, if you see the characteristics, they are used individually or in combination with mechanical methods. If you are using combined method, whereas the mechanical and then solvent extraction methods are combined to extract the oil from the seed, it is preferred actually for most of the seed except the soya bean because as I mentioned for the soya bean, if you use individual solvent extraction, the yield of oil is very high up to 98 to 99 percent of the oil that is present in the seeds, all, all that amount can be you know uh, extracted by using individual solvent extraction process. Right? So, whereas the for other seeds it is better to go for the combined method where both mechanical and solvent extraction methods are applied followed by the purification 
So, if you do the extraction of oil from soya bean by using individual solvent extraction method which is better one because the yield is very high 98 to 99 percent, but however the quality is poor dark color odoriferous and high free fatty acid contents would be there. These uh, free fatty acid contents are good for the soap manufacturing purpose etc., but not good for the cooking oil purpose. If you use the combination of uh, expeller and solvent extraction methods for other oils other than soya bean, then you can have over 80 percent of uh, extraction as prime quality oil and then only 18 to 19 percent as poorer grade. That is the advantage of a combination of these two methods, mechanical and then solvent extraction methods. Okay? Types of solvents used for solvent extraction methods are petroleum cuts in the hexane range which are flammable, trichloroethylene also used which is nothing but toxic. So, however, though petroleum cuts such, a, such as hexane are uh, flammable, people prefer for this one because of a superiority or superior quality of the solvent for the extraction. So, n hexane is a very good uh, solvent for the extraction process. That is the reason despite of fire hazards, petroleum solvents are preferred for solvent extraction of uh, crude oils from the uh, oil seeds. Purification, different approaches are there. First one is uh, treating with alkali such as NaOH or Na2CO3 to remove free fatty acids as food by centrifugation. These foods may be used for the soaps manufacturing. Then followed by bleaching is done with adsorbent clays such as fuller's earth and with adsorption carbon. Okay. Followed by filtration is done on pre-coat rotary drum filters. In some cases, plate and frame presses also used. We studied uh, rotary uh, vacuum filter approach for the purification in the flow chart. Okay? So, different types of uh, filtration process you may be studying in mechanical unit operation course. These are uh, important uh, unit operations for chemical industries. Alternative route is to solvent extract by use of propane because propane is miscible with all of the oil below 80 degree centigrade. However, it is immiscible with fatty acids and color bodies near critical temperature of propane which is approximately at 96 degree centigrade. In extraction column, temperature gradients are maintained such a way that you can have effective two phase separation in the process. References for this particular lecture are provided here. Outlines of Chemical Technology by Dryden, edited and revised by Gopal Rao and Marshall, third edition. Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Shreve, fifth edition. Encyclopedia of Chemical Technology, Kirk and Atmar, fourth edition. Unit Processes in Organic Synthesis by Groggins, 5th edition. Thank you.